This podcast that you'll view in class today is essentially a worksheet labeled Titration of a Weak Base by a Strong Acid that you will find in your notebook. It also correlates to this diagram, one of the many graphs that you will see in the titration helper sheet that we've been using over the past few days to understand how to graph the titration of various substances. So you're going to need a few things. One, go get the worksheet. Make sure you have a calculator. <coughs> if you'd like to keep this picture handy to refer to, feel free. And my recommendation is that as you begin a problem, I would watch the mini vodcast for that particular question in its entirety, then pause the vodcast and go to work on solving the problem. So let's begin. The worksheet again is entitled Titration of a Weak Base by a Strong Acid. As you can see, we start with 25 milliliters of 0.2 molar ammonia and the Kb of ammonia, how it acts when it's a base, is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So we've got this ammonia dissolved in water it's going to undergo a little bit of hydrolysis. So we need to find the hydroxide ion concentration at the end from which we could find hydrogen from which we can find pH. So we don't even need the 25 milliliters. We basically need the 0.2 molar initial concentration of the ammonia. It changes by reducing an X while ammonium and hydroxide increase by X. We get to ignore the X once again because as you can see the Kb is small, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So knowing what we know about Kb, it would be ammonium times hydroxide divided by NH3. We would set that equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, the Kb. Now we're going to solve for X. Well clearly X squared is going to be equal to 0.2 times 10 to the minus 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, and all of that needs to have the square root taken of it so we can solve for x. What's x once again? Among other things, it's the hydroxide ion concentration. When I'm done, I get 0.001897, kind of a lot of numbers to leave in my calculator, so I'm going to call that 1.9, and you could have 1.90 times 10 to the minus 3 molar in hydroxide. From here, I reread what the question wants, pH. So go ahead, find your pOH, and take your knowledge of the understanding of the relationship between pH and pOH to calculate the pH in this situation. At this moment, pause the vodcast and go on to solve problem one. I'll be back to help you with two. Now here's question number two. We begin now to challenge that weak base ammonia by adding 15 milliliters of 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid. So let's take off at our original starting point. Remember that first dilute then newt little ditty that I taught you guys? Don't forget, if I add 15 milliliters of one substance to 25 of another, I have a new total volume of 40 milliliters. So the original concentrations of your substances are not the same since now we've combined a weak base with a strong acid. Let's look at the calculations for this weak base concentration. Over here on the far left, I've taken 0 0.025, 25 milliliters, times 0.2, the molarity, divided by the new total volume, adding the volume of the added acid in liters to that of the original base. I come up with 0.125 molar as the initial concentration located here. I'll do the same thing with the HCl. 0.015 is the number of milliliters of HCl. 0.2 is its molarity. The new total volume is the same, 0.040 liters, so I have a starting molarity of 0.075. Notice what makes this different. This time the weak base is being neutralized to some extent by the hydrochloric acid, but I put that little greater than sign there in between the two to show you that all of the acid will be neutralized by NH3 and some of the NH3 will be left over. By whatever amount those two substances decrease, the ammonium, the conjugate, let's say this right, acid of the weak base ammonia, that's going to increase by the same amount. So that number, 0.075, came by understanding that 0.125 is much bigger than 0.075, so 
So no hydrochloric acid is left. 0.05 molar is left of the base, NH3, and we're going to call this 0.075, that conjugate acid. So we need to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which as you recall, is if they're asking for pH, pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. It gets confusing here because we don't care about the hydrochloric acid, we care about this conjugate acid, the NH4 that formed when you had some of the ammonium turn into ammonia, sorry, ammonia turn into ammonium by accepting a hydrogen. So notice I haven't put the henderson hasselbach in there because, hey, you need to do something else too before you can solve this problem. We know <clears throat> that the Kb of NH3 is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So the only way that you get to find the Ka of ammonium, because we're going to need pKa in the henderson hasselbach is to use that relationship between Ka and Kb. Remember Ka times Kb equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Now you have the Kb from the previous problem. You've got the ion product constant for water. Calculate the Ka for ammonium then, and then when you punch it into the henderson hasselbach equation, whoops, right here, you will need to have the pKa. I'll pause here to let you go ahead and solve that problem. If your pH isn't going down from the original problem, excuse me, going up from the original problem, no, going down, I got it straight. I'm adding acid, I'm neutralizing the weak base, so I should be seeing my pH dropping as I continue to add 0.2 molar HCl. So take a moment, pause the vodcast, solve problem two. Now when you get to question number three, notice that that volume is 25 milliliters. If you go back and look at the graph of this titration of the weak base by the strong acid, 25 milliliters is the volume that we have to add to where we reach the equivalence point. And remember at the equivalence point, the moles of the acid equals the moles of the base. And they all totally neutralize each other. So you don't have any NH3 left to worry about, and you don't have any HCl left to worry about. What you do have is a solution that contains ammonium ions. And actually, it's ammonium chloride, but when it splits up in water, the ammonium ions can also hydrolyze, and that's what you have to manipulate to find the pH now. So notice that this has gone back to being in equilibrium. We start off by writing our expression. NH4 plus water yields NH3 plus hydronium. Remember those ammonium salts can start to make uh, solutions a little bit more acidic because of the formation of a hydronium ion. So where did I get this 0.1 molar to start with? Well, let's go figure that out. I had to get the Ka for ammonium because here it is acting as an acid, donating a hydrogen to water, forming hydronium. So to get the Ka for ammonium, I multiply it by the Kb for ammonia, NH3, and that should be equal to the ion product constant for water. Now I have a Ka for the ammonium ion. So if the Ka is equal to NH3 times hydronium, and if we let each of those be represented by the value x, my Ka should be equal to 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10, and that should be equal to x squared over 0.10. Where'd that 0.10 come from? I'm telling you in the problem originally, we have 0.1 molar of ammonium chloride that would have formed, and that's what we have here. We got to ignore the x, because as you can see, 10 to the minus 10 is a tiny Ka, so there's my original concentration of the ammonium ion acting as an acid. You need to find out this pH. So once you solve for X, the concentration of the hydronium ion, you can now go find the pH by taking the negative log. Pause now 
and solve problem number three on your own. We're almost done. At question four, which is on the back side of this worksheet, we now have a situation where we go beyond the equivalence point. Remember the addition of 25 milliliters brought us to the equivalence point? Well, if I slam in 35 milliliters of 0.2 molar HCl, now I've gone beyond the HCl is dominating and it's not in equilibrium anymore, and there's so much excess HCl in there, you don't even have to worry about the tiny impact that the ammonium ion might have on pH. So essentially what you need to find in your challenge on this problem, which as you can see is much more skeletal, is to find the final concentration of hydrogen ion so that you can find what the problem wants, pH. I do need to notice that 35 milliliters of 0.2 molar HCl is being added to 25 milliliters of the original 0.2 molar NH3. So we'll need a starting concentration of this NH3, and that would be molarity times volume, 0.025 times 0.2, divided by the new total volume, which now is 60, I believe. Once you get the concentration of the ammonia, that will be what will go into this box right here. And that would be your initial concentration that would start here. I'm going to ask you to do the same type of calculation for the HCl. Concentration of HCl will be its molarity times its volume. We have 35 milliliters times 0.2 or 0.035 liters and that would also be divided by the new total volume of 60 milliliters or 0.060 liters. You'll be able to see once you finish that calculation that there's way more HCl in NH3 leading you to conclude no NH3 is present. I don't even need to worry about what's happening in the formation of the NH4. You just need to find out how much of the hydrogen from the HCl is left over, and from that, calculate the pH once you go beyond the equivalence point. Okay, you don't need to pause anymore. You can stop the vodcast, revisit any parts that you have questions about, or please come and see me. You should now be able to calculate these four problems on the titration of a weak base with a strong acid. Just as an aside though, I'd like to mention that in the helper sheet, it shows you a funny picture right after this about how a titration of a weak base with a weak acid turns out. And those, they're not very informative. There's not enough, I don't know what to say, not enough dramatic type changes in the titration graph that can give us any useful information. So weak base, weak acid titrations are generally not done. Until next time.